Morning, hounds. It's a beautiful one, huh? Not all gloomy like yesterday. <laughs> We got a soybean seed delivery here. We got some seed this year that we're getting in bulk. Meaning they bring it out with a tender like this and fill us up. We don't have to keep the boxes or the bags on hand. They'll actually just bring it right out to us and put it in our tender for us. You can really see off to the northeast the way the clouds are rolling out of here. And you look west. Hopefully we've got sunshine all day. We should. We really should finish corn today, as long as the fertilizer truck was there this morning when it was supposed to be. I would say that's plenty full enough. 320 units. Yeah, it looks full. We are back at the field here, ready to go. So they spread fertilizer on the north end over there. I can't point because I got too much stuff in my other hand, but they spread fertilizer, so we gotta till it. And then Jim is gonna hit it with the roller because it's got some pretty thick manure in a lot of spots. Oh, disconnect. Will it be dead anyway? Nope. As long as I got a few minutes to wait for them, I figure I may as well put some eyes on stuff, make sure everything looks okay. Make sure none of the T-arms here that adjust the depth have moved. Just kind of make sure these bushings don't look like any more of those have loosened up. Watch for rocks that sometimes will get hung up in things. I think we're mostly good. On the way here um, from 18 to 21, to me there was a massive leap um, mentally. You guys can see, for those who know what you're looking at here, kind of how thick this manure is, especially up here where he had the cattle feeders. We're trying to do the best job we can to spread this all out, um, but this is this is pretty soft, fertile stuff here, and it isn't gonna crust. If we get some rain, this manure is gonna stay soft. And with the kind of clumpiness of it, because the cattle create compaction, it's, uh, it's a little tougher to push through it and plant evenly. So I crank up the down pressure on the row units. That's easy to do from in the cab. I'm also now gonna move the T-handles, actually, and set them all roughly a half inch deeper. So I'm gonna be planting at a solid two inches, two and a quarter inches deep into this. There we go. Pretty simple. I've done that before in years past when we've had corn up here. It's just, it's tough. The manure is inconsistent. It's compacted from the cattle walking on it. But it seems like planting deeper helps us get a little bit better stand. On these conditions anyway, we don't always want to go deeper, but in this case, we do. I need seed. And since we're down to our last 50 acres or so of corn here, we're gonna be picking away at bags. Bags. And uh, we're, right now we're gonna dump some just leftover mixed test plot stuff in. So it's like, a, we're not going with a single hybrid here. It's, it's gonna be quite a mixture, a melting pot, if you will. Look at that, it's a fresh, shiny Millennial Farmer t-shirt. When you run a business, every misplaced moment can feel like a missed opportunity, like a lost chance to make your business better. When it comes to handling the shipping processes of Millennial Farmer merchandise, we and the Farm Focus brand use ShipStation for everything. What ShipStation does is they automate all those time-intensive shipping processes and they're already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. And not just in the U.S. alone, but in the U.K., Canada, and Australia. 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it as long as they're in business. ShipStation also provides deeply discounted shipping rates normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies. They make it easy to compare carriers, rates, and delivery time options for every shipping scenario. So if you're looking for a way to let go of all those shipping tasks, ShipStation can do it better and faster. Sign up for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com slash Millennial Farmer and start saving time on every shipment. That is a whole two months of shipping made quick and painless, and it's completely free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com slash Millennial Farmer. Can, can anybody use this if you've got like a, an Etsy store, you're selling stuff on Amazon or eBay? Fo uh, folks who are shipping one or two items a week all the way to folks who are shipping 
thousands and thousands of items a day. This particular software is built to handle all that. Keep coming. There, let me drop the gate. Oh yeah, I'm the camera guy. Plus you're kind of in my way. There. stepped on a bee thing that uh, Amber Heard did that's all the rage on TikTok? Yeah. How do I get the original just her doing my dog stepped on a bee and then do my own thing after it? I'll find it. I have finished this field. Now we got a 20 acre long skinny piece with a lot of side hills that are really wet and it looks like these boys are still enjoying picking some of the twine out of the field cultivator. Part of it, it's uh, I guess it's nicer to do here out in the field than um, crawling around on the gravel in the yard. And that stuff gets in the bearings on the basket. That's the worst part. So we ran the baskets up in this field, but they still, they still picked a few up. I'm gonna fold up here and then go out and see what, see what they're up to, see if they need some help. These are the ones that caused the problem. We are probably gonna have to get in there and pull those bearings out to get those to spin right again, but luckily it looks like it's just all of them. And now it looks like they're relearning how to fold the Mendeco roller up. We just got that last year. Nobody's run it for over a year now, so you gotta kinda reteach yourself everything once a year. I'm waiting for you to get out of the way. Yeah, it looks that way. We're, we're gonna have some bearings to pull apart too, huh? As long as I'm waiting for them to get out, I'm gonna go ahead and raise our gauge wheels here again so we're planting a half inch shallower before the next field. It's pretty simple, there's just a control arm in here. You can see that move up and down. All that does is change the depth that it allows these wheels to go to which control how deep they allow the openers to put the seed in. Pretty simple. Nope. Oh, oh, I wonder, I didn't notice that making a mess. Ah, <clears throat> uh, now I'm gonna have cow manure on my hands. It's dry. Speaking of frost, you know, you told me that uh, Joe Sealard got stuck yesterday and there were frost, it was frost down there. I asked Randy about it. He said there's spots where there's still a good amount of frost, one feet, one foot down. Well, that sure explained why the surface is not getting dry, wasn't it? Yeah, that'll do it. But man, it's been it's been warm enough to take that out. I just I can't believe that's still there. It must have been it must have been really frozen in a lot of spots. This whole corner down here on this piece is slimy, and I, there's a lot of draws like this. This whole thing kind of poopty doos back there for a half mile or more. So I guess we'll unfold and go see what kind of an adventure we can get into. I'm hoping it's not very exciting. I love non-exciting adventures when I'm out working in the fields. I'm about out of seed, and I know that because the planter told me so, because it's got a lot of cool sensors that let me know when stuff is up. Plus I can see it in those tanks. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of seed in. I should have less than 10 acres left here, which is, carry the nine, like four bags, bags. And each row probably already has about a bag left in the little row units already. Yep, sure enough, they're getting empty. The unopened bags will go back to the dealer, but anything, anything that's still in the planter and we gotta drain out is non-returnable, so 
it's just gonna sit in our shed for a year. Therefore, we want as little left as possible. There's not supposed to be water in that spot. Knowing what I know now, I'll bet you there's frost underneath it. That's pretty crazy. There it is, that little gap there, that little guy. We're done. As Randy would say, D-U-N, done. Done planting corn. Now I gotta get home and we're gonna switch this thing over to soybeans. Back to work. Once we boogied down, boogied, boogied under, once we gave her the, gave her the juice, gave her the, gave her the nuts, we were able to get done pretty quickly. Luckily it's not rush hour out here at the moment. Those dandelions are driving me bonkers. Yeah, I know a whole bunch of you are gonna tell me not to spray them because they're good for pollinators. We'll plant them on your lawn then. Oh, there can't be much in there. Okay. I only put two bags in at Ole's and I, didn't, I guess I didn't check how many acres I did, but for the last half round or more, it was flashing at me that it was out of seed. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Now we begin the process of switching things over to beans. So we got a few things inside the row units we will change. We'll dump the hoppers, which there's very, very little left in there, but we got to clean them out. And then everything else really is just adjustments that we make on the computer monitor inside the cab. So it shouldn't take us too long. It's a little slow if you got one guy doing it, but, but uh, it, it is nice not to have to go back and forth. Some years we got to go back and forth between corn and soybeans a couple of times. This is much nicer that we are now finished with corn and can do this once. Pull our hose, open our cap. A lot of times I just take these off because it makes it a little easier to work with them. Pull the bowl out. This is gonna dump the extra seed. Then we dump the extra leftover seed. We will save that over winter. We'll put that in a bag and then uh, we will end up changing two different bowls here that have a lot more holes in them for soybeans because you plant a lot more of them. We'll change this strip out and we'll change this wheel right here. Come along with me and I'll show you how it's done. I think I'm doing this right, I haven't done it for a year. I gotta get under this, pop it off. Try not to break it. Pull the green one out, that one's for corn. Grab a yellow one, a yellow. Clip that into place. Swap a corn bowl for a soybean bowl. Let's go into here, it's easier to. There we go. You can see how many more holes are actually open in this one. Pop that on. Make sure it's tensioned up. Oh, that one's got plenty of tension. And then we pull the knockoff wheel or the dealio tutor, you can call it. Out of here, but I don't remember. There we go, no, I don't even need a tool for that. Just release the tab. Pops out. This planter might be different. I'm gonna have to do some research and try to remember that, because we used to have to pull the knockout wheels out and replace them with a scraper, but I'm not finding anything in these boxes, so I don't remember. I'm guessing you don't remember either if we have to replace the knockout wheels on this planter? I have no idea. I'm gonna check on the internet, see if anybody made a YouTube video about it last year. Okay, you just had a call Daryl. Get it done now. So here's a video of an idiot changing a planter over last year. See if there's anything in there about the wheels or anything. According to the idiot instructor that I found on YouTube, he left the knockout wheels in. We just, uh, we changed the double eliminator as well. I kind of forgot about that, but I was wondering about it. And the wheels go back in, so. It's nice that they have guys like that that put information online. And here's the local dealer. Ron's gonna come in here and put sensors in or test rows four, seven, and 19. Because those are the consistent ones that are giving me attitude. There's the man throwing in fuel. And we got this thing greased up. We got the gauge wheels set. We got the tanks emptied. Ron replaced some sensors. Everything should be good to go here. We're just gonna throw a couple gallons of uh, hydraulic oil in the tractor, because I did lose a little bit here when this hose went. And, and I haven't cleaned that yet. I don't know if you can tell. And in that amount of time, Jim got another 130 acres dug for me. So he's a little ways ahead of me. 
Which is good. He's going to keep going and I'm going to move up there and start on feeding. Was it dry out there? Yeah, Dr not bad. Dry it, okay, dry enough. And for the first time this year, we got thunder running. We also need seed. We need to put seed in so we can plant. And for soybeans, we like to put in soybean seed. I think we're gonna need another box of talc here. So I'll let him line that up. Well, I grab another box or pail of internal rotating parts dry lubricant. Ready? They're the same in both sides, right? It's the same seed in both front and back? Yep, all the same. 1.4 inches. All right, time to giddy up. Switch from corn to soybeans. Variety. Single. Got a few settings changed over on the computer, and hopefully they're correct. And this thing knows what I'm trying to do, and I know what it's trying to do. And everybody will get along great. Our first field here is just about a half mile south of the farm. Actually, the original homestead. See that hill over there on the other side of the quarter? Right over there? That's the spot where my great, great, great grandparents, whatever six generations ago is, where they originally built when they came over from Sweden in 1868. So besides our family, the U.S. federal government is the only other owner of this land since the prairie's been broke. How neat is that? We're doing it. I have no gauge wheel downforce sensors going off on me yet. Oh, well, they're not going. Oh, there it is. There it is. Row 19 is still not happy. Keep an eye on that. Oh, it came back. It's good now. Just wanted to let me know. Target population is planting. Singulation is amazing. Spacing is good. No oh, row cleaners. I'm going to run those down now. Except row 19 warnings in my way. That looks good. That looks good. Woo! As usual, when we start out with something new, we got to jump out and make sure everything looks the way it's supposed to look. Think I can do it? Think I can do it? I can do it. Ah! I was planning on making a clean jump, but when I got close, I realized I couldn't do it. Wow, it seems really wet underneath the tillage here. Like to the point where it's tough to dig in there. That is mucky. I gotta take some downforce away from that. Holy crud. It's just sticky. Wow, look at that. I think that's the millennial farmer's kid. There is AC. It must be all the way up to, I don't know, 65 out there? We got a row unit plowing. I don't know if it's in the wheels or what it's in, but Onyx spotted it, so I'll have him dig it out. That's what he gets for paying too close of attention. That's the one. I don't know what's blowing. Maybe it came out now. Oh yeah. Yeah, I figured out what's plowing. I think that's probably our problem. That's just a cute little guy. I used to think, and I still do think, rock buckets on tractors are silly. Because that would be full every 100 feet for us if we picked up every rock that size. But sometimes it saves me from walking all the way to the end of the field. our first 80 acres done Onyx. 80 acres of beans done. Now we jump to that side of the ditch for another 60. And Grandpa's gonna bring out some seed real soon. I don't need it for 30 acres but then he's gonna go run the digger. And supposedly your mom is bringing food. But that's been like two hours since she asked so I don't know if she's actually bringing food or Drive through, but my ice cream's probably melted by now. Your ice cream might be slushy. We jumped the ditch, now we got uh, seed coming. So I'm gonna wait a minute, and I'm pretty sure we got 
supper coming as well. Ugh. With soybeans, we plant at such a higher population rate, 30, 130,000 instead of 32, 33,000. So we end up having to fill a lot more often. Okay. Yeah, that, I'll get the auger out and we'll see where we're at. We're loaded up and I already got supper waiting for me in the cab there, just in time to do some endros when I can't really eat it. I'll have to do it the old fashioned way and figure out how to eat while I steer. Ugh. Get those McNuggets out of my way. You got your socks? You don't even... Kids. Go ahead. Still going okay for you? Yeah, I don't have, I don't know, not many acres left. Another another long round and then finish up the short one. So I'm gonna be done here in 20 minutes. Oh, but it sure is very small. Yeah, I just noticed it the last minute or two, but there must be something in there that's burning black. Maybe some black yeah, oak. Sure is. That says Goodyear on the side. The fire burned out, by the way. It's kind of just gone. And I'm on my last round here. Pretty good start to soybean planting. DUN done with the first soybean field. Kind of a, I don't know, like a boring, uneventful day. Which is great. It, it doesn't make fantastic YouTube, but it's, it's great when you're operating a farm. Thunder. You guys still like that? I don't know why or how I ever started that, but it seemed like a few of you like that. Well, that does it for the night. Got a gauge wheel to put on in the morning. One of our neighbors happens to be the local parts manager at the local dealership, so we'll toss that on in the morning. We got a bent one from, I'm sure from hitting a rock. So it was, when I was adjusting it earlier, it's hard to adjust something that's bent by half an inch, but that's that. Boring day. I mean, you're welcome. Thanks for watching.